evening to those that are joining online and good evening to people in the room as well. It's good to be here in God's house. It's good to be together and uh, yeah, we have God's word. So uh, just a little reminder of what's going on in the next few weeks. We've got a fellowship lunch this Sunday. So um, come along to that if you can. Uh, bring something with you if you can. Bring someone with you if you can. <laughs> And uh, then um, next Wednesday is normal, I think, isn't it? It's although it's probably prayer as well yes. as um, as a, a, a Bible study. And then um, the following weeks we've got on the fifteenth mm -hmm. carol singing. So uh, come and come to church as normal, and then we'll do carol singing after church early afternoon so bring uh, a lunch with you if you can and uh, we'll we'll head out straight onto the streets and then um, on the 22nd we have our carol service and that will be at 4 p.m in the afternoon rather than 11 o'clock so just a few details for the weeks ahead uh, and then christmas is coming so let's pray let's give this time to the Lord and let's just trust him in everything yeah Heavenly Father we just thank you Lord today we, we want to worship you we want to praise you for all that you you are all that you've done and we just thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness Lord fill us with your spirit now Lord we ask strengthen us for those that have been at work that are uh, tired uh, those that have been traveling as well just cover each one lord now and, uh, and bless those that can't be with us tonight lord those that are usually with us and encourage those that are watching at home lord we pray uh, minister your life now we ask uh, use this time for your purpose and your glory's sake in the name of our lord jesus christ amen, amen. so tonight um we might not be too long, but we've got um, a psalm to look at, Psalm 56. And it says, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. My enemies would daily swallow me up for they be many that fight against me O thou most high what time I am afraid I will trust in thee in God I will praise his word in God I have put my trust I will not fear what flesh can do unto me every day they rest my words all their thoughts are against me for evil they gather themselves together they hide themselves they mark my steps when they wait for my soul Shall they escape by iniquity in thine anger? Cast them down, cast down the people of O oh God. Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know. For God is for me. In God I will praise his word. In the Lord I will praise his word. In God I will put my trust. I will not be af afraid what, can, what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praise unto thee 
for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words that we have read tonight, Lord. Just strengthen us now, Lord, we ask. Guide for every situation we face, Lord, we pray. Go before us now, fill us with your spirit, fill us with your life, and strengthen us, anoint us, Lord, we pray, with your spirit of life. We know nothing as we ought, and we <coughs> are humble before you now, just waiting on your word, waiting on your spirit. Guide us, Lord, we pray. Guide us into all truth and fill us and anoint us with your Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow. This psalm, it tells us, is a michtam of David. Um, yeah. A michtam just means an inscription, really. Uh, just something that, that uh, David wrote down. Uh, and it says that uh, David wrote this when the Philistines took him in Gath. So that's a little bit of background for when this psalm was written. You can find that story in Second Samuel, uh, oh, sorry, in First Samuel twenty-seven, and uh, and that yeah is just that part of. David's life when he was running away from Saul and he ended up with the Philistines and he ended up in the city of Gath and the king of the Philistines or the king of Gath I think was Achish and um, yeah there's that little season where David didn't quite know where he belonged. He was he was the Lord's anointed. He knew what God wanted for him. He believed in the Lord, but he was fleeing from Saul and dwelling in the midst of the Philistines. So he writes this this psalm, and what is it? It's be merciful unto me, O God. For man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. So David's very conscious really of what his situation is. In that he's surrounded by enemies. If he went back to into uh, the nation of Israel. Then Saul is, is hunting him down. And seeking his life. But then if he stays amongst the Philistines, yeah, I mean, yes, he's he's fine at that point in time while they think he's on their side. But really, most of them don't trust him. The king trusts him. But actually, no, it's like most of them don't don't, don't think that he's he he is uh he is with them really. And so people are watching him. So he cries out to God for mercy in his situation. And we often said that, that actually we can ask God for mercy. We can't really ask for grace. Because grace is something that <coughs> depends on the nature of the giver. It's something that's given freely without condition. So if we ask for something, we have to ask for, for mercy or clemency. Uh, and, and God often answers that prayer because he is the God of mercy, the father of mercies. And he loves to do that. And he loves to be merciful to, her, to his people. And he is a God who is gentle, he is slow to anger, uh, abounding in mercy. So, yeah. David here starts off with be merciful 
unto me, O God. In one sense, that's where we all start, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Every walk with God has to start that way. Because we, we start off knowing that we're conscious of our sin and conscious that we can do nothing about our sin. And this picture is quite good of David because he's surrounded by the enemies in the same way that we're surrounded by the world and our flesh and our sin nature and, and temptations and the devil and demonic forces and the world system and it's like yeah you know we are in the middle of it all mm. and what do we do we you know we just we can just cry out to god be merciful mm. unto me and yeah mm -hmm. that's how david starts and that is how every one of us start off asking god for mercy and god is, has seen fit to make a plan of mercy by sending his son to the cross for us by offering up a perfect sacrifice for us and that is the that is the the answer that that god has mm -hmm. when we cry out to mercy in one sense you know we we often cry out for mercy we cry out for for different uh, situations we get into but you know what the answer is always the same answer the lord jesus christ there is no other answer uh, christ and him crucified christ in the answer trust in god christ in my heart christ in the situation yeah he is the answer and it says you know the oh god for man would swallow me up and that's in two verses verse one and two they would day mine enemies would daily swallow me up now on a wednesday night we come to church i come straight from work my mm -hmm. wife has just got back from uh, wales and uh, so, you know, uh, tonight we ordered a pizza and swallowed it up quickly. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry, I wasn't planning to, to mention it. But, but there we go. But, but you see, swallowing up, <coughs> it's quite a strong image, isn't it? Mm. Uh, you know, when the devil surrounds us we have that fear and actually the devil loves to put fears into our heart doesn't he mm -hmm. the devil loves to play on our insecurities uh, and say you know oh you're just a puny man woman you're a, a believer you're on your own and this world this life and the enemies will swallow you up you know that's the thing isn't it Maybe we have had nightmares. I remember who was it used to say that? I think my uh, one of my sister in laws used to say that as a child. The nightmare was always being chased by a monster or a lion or something like that. And the terrifying thing was that you would be eaten. And when we're a child, we, you know, oh, there's a monster in the cupboard, there's a monster in the bed, in the, under the bed. And it's like, yeah, you know, that it's, it's going to swallow me up, it's going to take control of me. And yeah, this is the thing, isn't it? Uh, it's a deep-seated insecurity in the heart of man. And we say, well, you know, those, those things aren't real. But today, you know, there are things that could maybe swallow us up if we let them. Or maybe we fear they can swallow us up. The enemies... Our guilt could swallow us up. Our addiction could swallow us up. Our fears could swallow us up. Worry could swallow us up. And uh, there are many things. And David says, my enemies could swallow me up. What does it mean to be swallowed up? To sort of cease to exist. To lose our identity to be completely taken over. We live in an era today where actually companies are often swallowed up by bigger companies. 
you know, I, I come across this at work all the time where, you know, you hear about, oh, did you hear that this company has been taken over by this other bigger company? And this one, this company has joined this group. And it's like, and sometimes it's fine. And it's like, well, it will be better because the company is bigger and it has more buying power and it, you know, and, and it, jobs are secure. And people like it from that point of view. But what tends to happen though when something is swallowed up is that individual identity is no longer there. You know, like this, uh, um, maybe, you know, like uh, a company has a certain product or a certain design or a certain uh, value system and then it gets taken over and that doesn't necessarily remain the same. Or that, you know, we're going to make your product, but we're going to use our uh, resources and our factories and our staff to do it. And it's like, fine, yeah, good. And that, when that happens, I, I'm talking about that now more because actually maybe that's where we see this idea of swallowing up, <laughs> literally. more. But actually for people, it could happen as well that maybe a group, a society, could swallow us up and we would lose our right individuality. You know, a political party or a group of friends or even an ideology. People get uh, so swallowed up with causes these days and it's like they almost lose their mm. self through it well I'm going to fight for this and sometimes they can even be good causes but actually if it takes away our relationship with the Lord and our individuality and our freedom of choice then actually no we have to be careful <laughs> my enemies would swallow me up daily they oppress. Wow. <laughs> and what is the answer? The answer is to trust in God. You know, what can keep us from being swallowed? Well, actually, if you think about it, the New Testament tells us that we have Christ in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. But also it tells us that we are in Christ when we trust him as saviour, when we uh, give our heart to him. It tells us that we are in Christ. We are part of the body of Christ. Now, think about it. If you're a little fish swimming along, in the sea it's very easy to be swallowed up by a whale or a shark or something that's much bigger how do they how do these fishes get around that and often the answer is they swim in a big shoal and they all come together and they appear as a bigger fish so the shark is afraid of them because they see it sees this great big dark mass coming towards it which is something much bigger than it so it will not go towards it but actually it could be made up of lots of little fish <laughs> now in one sense you know how do we uh, how do we protect ourselves from being swallowed up and the answer is to be in the body of Christ mm -hmm. to be in Christ mm -hmm. because however big something is it can't swallow God Nobody can swallow God. <laughs> he, he is bigger than anyone, bigger than anything. So if our heart is secure in Christ and we are in God, then actually, yeah, that is a, a good way. Uh, how do we do that practically? Yeah, come together. There's a few of us together here tonight. And I know it's uh, sometimes a struggle to get here on a Wednesday night and it's always difficult. People are tired. Uh, the schedules don't always work out. And, um, you know, 
whenever we can come together, it's a good thing. Why? Because we're part of the big fish, as it were. We're part of the body of Christ. We need each other. We need each other's limbs. We need each other's eyes and ears. Uh, we, we have to be part of one body of Christ. And that is one of the things that helps to preserve us and protect us from being swallowed up by the world. And yeah, if you can't, join with us that is no condemnation that's not what we're saying here tonight but it's just for our own well-being and our own peace of mind actually being together with other believers it reminds us who we are it reminds us uh, what we have in Christ and yeah let's come together whenever we can let's join together as we have this uh this season now of um, uh, coming up to Christmas and we have extra events on. Yeah, come out when you can. It'll be good to be together whenever we can. <laughs> yeah, and this thing, this fear that the devil puts out there, the fear of man. Think about this. Uh, it's maybe a well-known verse, but... Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Wow. So, yeah. There's a few times in this psalm it says, David says, I'm not going to feel what can man can do to me. Mm. And it's good for us to remember that our confidence is not in our own flesh, our own abilities, our own strength. Uh, it's not in, in, in things around us to keep us safe, our financial security or whatever it is that we put up there. No, actually, our hope is in the Lord and our strength is in the Lord. And actually, fearing him above everything else gives us that confidence. As we were talking about at the weekend, the people who kept on going when times were tough, Ezra building the wall, Daniel kept on praying, Peter and John kept on preaching. Why? Because... They were in the Lord. They feared God. They feared God rather than men. And, and they had that godly fear. Whom should we fear? The Lord only. He is the one. And he was able to, put, to destroy body and soul in hell. He's able to destroy our enemies as well. And that's not just, you know, the people at work we don't like and the funny neighbour across the road or whoever it is, you know. No, we're not talking about people. But our enemies are spiritual enemies as well. He's able to deal with those those things that come against us. Our own temptations and our own flesh and the devil and the demonic forces. God is able to destroy them. And God is able to give us victory in these things and though we we feel weak and we are afraid sometimes no do not fear what man can do but trust in what the lord is able to do in god i will praise his word in god i will put my trust i will not fear what flesh can do unto me wow whatever time I'm afraid it says what time I'm afraid it's not like a particular hour mm -hmm. oh I'm afraid every Tuesday at 5 o'clock no it's like no it's uh, whenever the, the, the King James says what time but it's like no um, whenever we are afraid we trust in the Lord whenever things come against us 
we just uh, turn to him, seek him, and uh, and trust him. <laughs> and it, it says, uh, verse 5, Every day they rest my words. Now, rest there is with a W. For those that are listening online, it's not R-E-S-T, it's W-R-E-S-T. As in to wrestle. As in to take control or uh, take something out of someone's hand. Um, you know, if you think of an arm wrestler, that's the, the idea. <laughs> you know, sort of, and it's like, yeah, to rest something. They rest my words. What does that mean? They take take things out of context. They they rest um, the things we say. They twist. Have we ever come across that? The enemy twists our words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? It happens all the time, and particularly in this day and age, to believers. If we take a stand on something, people sort of say, "Oh well, so you you you're against the opposite of that." No, that's not the point. Oh, you take you you. You're very right wing. You are no. That's not the point. Oh, you're very old fashioned. Yeah, no, that's not the point. We have we take a stand f- for God in humility and simpl- simplicity. And very often people will take take our words and twist them and uh, wrestle them out of our hand, as it were, and take it away. And it's like, yes, God has given us his word. It's interesting, isn't it? I will praise, in God I will praise his word. Is the previous verse. And then here, it's like, they, they rest my word. They try to take the word that I've received out of me. Wow. Remember the parable of the sower, actually? That's one of the things that... The first thing that happened, wasn't it? Um, Was when the birds of the air flew down on the the path. Um, They they gobbled up, they swallowed up the seed that had fallen there. So that before it even took root in the soil or had any effect at all, it was taken away and you know what the enemy loves to do that you know I listen to uh, I listen to good preaching I listen to a message from one of our churches around the world I go to a conference I listen to a worship song I, I do my daily devotional or something and then within minutes what happens it's like something happens to and it try and the devil tries to take it out of my thoughts and out of my mind. You know, it's like ah, oh, you know, what a blessed devotional I've had. And then it's Mom, the dog's eating my homework. You know, it's like <laughs> no, okay, fine. And then you know, we 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 go to work and we think oh, yeah, I'm going to pray and I go into work and then the first thing that happens in work is a problem. Uh, now the, the point is that they t- the enemy will try to rest the word because we the word is the word of God we trust in God's word God has put his word in us and, uh, and so our words become his words so when it's like my word yes they try to take it out of me and take it from mm-hmm. me so why so that I will fear so that I will go back into the fear and go back into the worry about being swallowed up and all of these things. It's like, no, God has put his word in me. In God, I will trust. It says that. In God, I have put my trust. Yes, they write that on a dollar bill, I think, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, whether they still believe it, I don't know. That's up to them. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> depends on the American, I think, but... 
but uh, we know very many mm. blessed Americans who, who do <coughs> believe in God. But it's like, yeah. But then what do they do? They, 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 they try to twist the words, but then they also hide themselves and mark my steps. What's that talking about? That's talking about an ambush. It is really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's this idea that the enemy is going to, they're going to be there in secret, hide themselves, and they will, they will watch my steps. In other words, they're going to look for every, every move that we make. They watch where we go. They watch what we do. Every breath you take, every move you make, <laughs> they're watching. Uh, but yes, it's like, well, but, you know, our steps are ordered by the Lord, aren't they? We were talking about that a few weeks ago. Is it Psalm 37? I think it was. But yeah, our, our steps are ordered by the Lord. So actually, they're watching our steps. They're watching where we go. They're watching for our habits. They're watching for the things that we do regularly. Mm. And they're watching to see if they can catch us out in anything. <laughs> wow. It's uh, and the idea is that they hide themselves and that they will they will mount an attack it's funny isn't it how the world is very secretive about things like that it's secretive about its own problems it will it will it will bring to light everyone else's problems it will publish in the newspapers any scandal that it gets but the people who are doing the publishing of the scandal are very good at covering their own faults and their own ways. And it's like, yeah, they hide themselves. The enemy is also deceitful, isn't it? Remember, the serpent in the Garden of Eden, it says, was more subtle than any of the other creatures. In other words, you know, there was that deceitfulness there. Someone is nice to our face, very sweet, won't say anything. But behind the back, they are waiting for the opportunity for us to fall. And they are waiting for the opportunity to attack. <laughs> and that is the way of this world. That is the way of the enemy. And this is what David found. The Philistines are there and they're watching Achish, the king, and they're watching David. And it's like, you know, as soon as he puts a foot wrong, we will see, we will notice, we will find out, we will look for it and we will bring it to light. Like we said about Daniel as well at the weekend, that they were, they were looking for a, a, an accusation against him. And in the end, they had to make his God illegal <laughs> for him to, to have a, a valid accusation against him. <laughs> but, yeah. Shall they escape by iniquity in thine anger cast down the people, O oh God. Now you might say, well, that's not very loving, very gracious. I thought we were supposed to love our enemies. Yeah, I mean, David here is in a war time situation, but also I think David is being very real. He's expressing his emotions. And also he's expressing a sense of injustice there. Because, yes, we have a God of mercy and we have a God of love. And we are called to love our enemies, yes. Mm. And we are called to pray for those that despitefully use us. And we do. 
and we do heap coals upon the heads of the enemies when when that happens but actually um david has that strong sense of justice he wants god to come through and even people who don't believe in that in god they still have that sense of justice don't they and it's like well this needs to happen this needs to be put right this is not fair now for us as believers we are able to love our enemies and we are able to let things go because we have god on our side and we give people to the lord and we say lord you know i have i have a struggle with this person i have a struggle with this situation help me with it and god so often comes through in these things and it's like well you know so we don't have to take retribution and vengeance is mine says the lord so we can leave things in god's hands and not worry about it this is another reason why atheism is such a depressing idea because yes i mean it robs people of hope it robs people of of any sense of wonder in the world but also there is no sense of divine justice if somebody gets away with something in this life and people do there was uh i was reading something only the other day about somebody who's going to be let out of jail under the new government scheme to make space in the prisons and the family of the person who was i think killed by someone they are they you know they they are annoyed and they say well there's no there's no justice here if this person who uh, I don't think they actually killed them you know but they were part of the of the of the conviction and it's like you know oh you know it's like there there is this no there is no sense of justice there and it's mm-hmm. like well you know but you know what we know that actually uh, God is the the final judge of things people who get away with things. And we see people get away with things all the time, don't we? Yeah. Mm. We see, I, you know, I was conscious that traffic was very bad tonight, uh, and the road that I usually come down was the back was, was closed. And it's like, oh, okay. So I came off the motorway thinking, oh, I can cut through the back lanes, and it was all closed off, which I think was partly why it was so bad. But then, so you know, well, I'll have to go down the main road. But then, lots of people. Rise down and continue. But you think, no, it's fine. But then you have this strong sense of injustice. It's like, why are they doing that? How can they do this? Yeah. And people get away with small things like that. But sometimes people <coughs> get away with big things. You know, there's several cases in the news of, of of people who are now have now died, and their their crimes have come to light after their death. And it's like, yo, well, this was terrible. This person did this. What's going to happen? Well, nothing can happen to them in this life. So for the atheist, where's the justice? But actually, we we know that God is the judge of all. And our peace of mind is to know that actually he will make things right. And maybe these people, you know, they, they, you know, maybe we get all fired up and angry about somebody. Have we ever done that in some, somebody who wronged us years ago or somebody who caused trouble in our life? And it's like, well, why did they do that? Why, why did God allow this? And, and you think, actually, maybe God is giving us the chance to forgive someone as well. <laughs> and actually, maybe the, the grace of God and his mercy will be all the more real when people have a, 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 a genuine knowledge that they've done something wrong as well. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Every day they rest my words, their thoughts uh, are, are against me for evil. They gather themselves together they hide themselves they mark my steps when they wait for my soul 
shall they escape by iniquity in thine anger cast down the people O God thou tellest my wanderings actually God knows where we're at God knows when we wander and God knows when we struggle he knows where we are at and he knows where the enemy is at as well and it says put thou my tears into thy bottle interesting isn't it we're told that God numbers the hairs of our head he knows our steps he knows our name he knows our innermost parts we are fearfully wonderfully made but also it says he put you know he puts our tears in a bottle <laughs> so he knows our emotions he knows what we go through think about that for a minute we we'll go off at a little bit of a tangent um, Luke chapter 7 there's a story there of a Pharisee's house and in verse 37 it says and behold a woman in the in the city which was a sinner when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment wow this woman had tears that case they weren't put in the bottle straight away <laughs> Uh, but God allowed them to flow. God sometimes allows us to go through seasons of tears. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But it says there in verse 44, um, And he turned to the woman and said, Simon, seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head thou gavest me no kiss but this woman since she the time she came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet my head with oil thou didst not anoint but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment Wherefore I say unto the, that her sins, which are many, are forgiven, hmm. for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Hmm. Wow. I read that again. Wow, that's <laughs> amazing, yeah. Yes, the woman, her tears, her tears were noticed. Her tears were effective. God used her tears for the situation. Her tears were a blessing. Her tears were honoured. That Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ says this woman's tears, they had value. And you know what? Sometimes we, you know, we think, oh, I'm just being sentimental. I'm being silly. I'm crying about something. Sometimes God says, no, your tears are noticed. Your tears are valuable they are precious they're written in the book it says doesn't it they're already written in the book and god says that you know it says put them in a bottle but they're already written in a book so god already knows about them they're already recorded the tears that we shed for people the tears that we shed over situations you know 
How do we how do we bring precious sheaves? Mm. We go forth weeping, don't we? That's what it says, isn't it? And we, you know, and sometimes it is very fruitful to weep over a situation, to weep over over someone. Think about this: the Lord Jesus Christ. He wept. You know, maybe we 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 think about that. The famous verse, John 11.35. Shortest verse in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Jesus wept. Okay. Mm-hmm. And again, even people in the world know that because it's a it's a trivia fact. You know, what's the shortest ver- verse in the Bible? Okay, Jesus wept. Yet why did he weep? For Lazarus. Was it for Lazarus? Because he knew that he was going to rate him. Actually, maybe it was for the mourning of others. Maybe it was for the fact that Martha and Mary had to go through the grief of losing their brother. Yes, Lazarus was going to be raised from the dead. Maybe it was for everyone who loses someone. Even though the Lord knows that they will be reunited again. My wife was at a funeral yesterday. Uh, a funeral of a, a precious lady who was a believer uh, who invested in her life when she was a child and it's like yes but the point is there actually there is that knowledge that actually we will see people again in Christ mm. but actually that partition between that time you know it is a time for weeping it's a valid time for weeping yes funerals can be a place to rejoice as well for the believer But, you know, Jesus wept as well. Why? Because of the grief for those that were affected by it. But also, the other thing it's important to remember is that that's not the only time we see Jesus weeping, is it? In Luke 19, it says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. (coughs) <coughs> saying if thou hadst known even thou at the least in this day the things which belong unto thy peace but now they are hid from thine eyes Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem wow mm. Why was that? He wept for the hardness of their hearts. Mm -hmm. He wept for the souls. He wept for uh, the situation. And actually, you know what? It is a fruitful thing for us sometimes to weep over situations. We go on outreach. You know, sometimes there's a brokenness there just thinking of the of the faces of the people that we see and sometimes the people that reject and the people that don't take them and you think oh you know it's like fine but you know maybe they they won't hear again maybe they won't have that opportunity we don't know jesus wept over the city of jerusalem how yeah, well, often i would have gathered thee as a, as a hen gathers her chickens but thou wouldst not wow yeah remember that Jesus said woman why weepest thou to Mary at the tomb where's that it's uh, Luke 24 I think isn't it you know it's like Mary's there and he he says "I, I, I don't know where my Lord is they've taken him away but he said, well, why, why weepest thou? Actually, there is a kingdom. There is salvation. There is, there is hope. And it's like, yes, that is not the reason for weeping. <laughs> Our tears, they are in the bottle. They are in, the, they are in God's book. He knows what we go through. <laughs> wow. Well, When I cr- 
cry unto thee. Then shall my enemies turn, turn back. This I know, for God is for me. You know, this psalm, it starts off from a place of desperation, doesn't it? It starts off from, I'm surrounded by enemies and I'm about to be swallowed up. And there doesn't seem to be any hope. But actually, by the end of the psalm, it's like, no, I know that God is for me. I know that God is doing things. I in, will praise God's word. And in the Lord, I will praise his word. God, in God, have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. And there's a slight change there from, you know, whether he will change to, well, I'm now, I'm not going to fear what man does. Because I have confidence in that God is for me. Romans 8, God is for us, who can be against us. He's not going to leave us, he's not going to forsake us. He is with us. Uh, Emmanuel, as we come towards Christmas, is God with us. Thy vows are upon me. God, I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will thou not deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Wow. So, yeah. said before that, that, that God knows our wandering thou tell us my wanderings in verse 8 but actually by the end of the psalm it's like no you've delivered my soul from death and you're going to keep my, my feet from, from falling from wandering from walking in the wrong place path and you're going to be put me in the path of light and you're going to keep me walking in the land of the living the light of the living and I'm going to trust you I'm going to praise you so <coughs> we'll leave it there tonight I think but uh, amen to that we'll pray and, uh, and sign off online as well but Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you're the God who comes through. You know where we are at. You know the enemies that surround us. You know the things that we are afraid of. And you know the thoughts, the habits, the actions that could swallow us up. You know the enemies that are surround us and how they deal with us in uh, deceitfulness. But Lord, we thank you that we have a God. And we trust in you. We place our trust in you. If we are in you, then we will not be swallowed. If we are in you, we will not wander astray. And if we are in you, you, you will know our, our way, our steps, our tears, our thoughts. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you are for us and we can trust you that there is nothing we can fear in this world when we trust you, when we look to you, when we rely on you. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us your heart. You've given us a plan. The plan is always Jesus. The plan is always your redemption, your faithfulness. And your plan is all, always for us to just keep trusting you. And thank you, Lord, that the more we trust you, we come to that conclusion like David, that actually we're not going to be swallowed. We're not going to be left alone. That you will take care of us. And we are on the victory side. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can leave things in your hands for justice. Mm -hmm. We don't have to fight every cause and... and and make everything right. We, we can leave it to you. Because you are the God who is just. You are the God who knows the hearts. 
And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you give us that opportunity. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love for us, Lord. Fill us with your life, Lord. We pray now that if there's anyone out there watching who has never trusted you as their saviour, we thank you, Lord, that they start, like the like the psalm started, but with the place asking for mercy, asking for forgiveness, but end like the psalm does also by declaring, you are for me. You are my God. I will trust you. And Lord, we just pray that if there's someone out there tonight who wants to say, I want to trust you, Lord. I do need forgiveness. I do need strength. I am afraid that things could swallow me up in this world. Mm -hmm. But I trust in the God who comes through. And I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, who has made the perfect provision for me. Mm -hmm. Who loves me. Yes. And lifts me up, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that you would be my saviour now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, please either get in touch or let someone else know. Uh, we will see you again soon. Uh, my greetings to, to Atif, our friend who's, the, who's watching. Anyone else who's out there watching as well. Uh, take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you.